Hi, it's Martin from Muller's Boxing Media. Um, delighted to announce our next guest, um, MTK one and only Lee Eaton. Lee, thank you very much for uh, giving me some of your time. No worries, mate. Thanks for having me on. Um, can see in the background that you, uh, you're you in the bubble. The boxing started last week. MTK show tomorrow night. Um, tell us how excited you are to be back. Yeah, I'm, I'm buzzing to be back. Obviously, we've we've been doing shows since August um, in bubbles. Obviously, we was meant to go. We had our last show in December. We was meant to go again in January. But the British Board of Control um, stopped all shows. So, obviously, we had a delay. Um, then we was meant to go to Dubai. Um, and then, obviously, the Dubai got red-listed by the government. So, obviously, that show got cancelled. Um, and now, obviously, we're in um, we're in Bolton for the um, show on t- tomorrow night. No, that's fantastic. Well, Lee, how did you... How did you get into boxing? Because like in 2000, I think it was 2017, um, you actually made a bold statement and you're like, well, I'm going into professional boxing uh, and look and, and and look at you now. Um, what what was the plan behind it? Um, no, basically in, I think it was 2012, a friend of mine um, called Ben Adair, one of, a very good friend of mine, um, we was going to watch uh, John Wayne Hibbert versus Tommy Coward in Doncaster on Steffi Ball's show. Um, and a week before that show, uh, Ben fell down the stairs and broke his neck and died. Obviously quite young. Um, and the last conversation I had with him was about boxing. Uh, so I decided to do an event in memory of him. So I just thought, I've always been around, obviously, the boxing, John Wayne Ibbets fights and stuff like that. I thought, you know what, I'm going to do a, um, a, a boxing show. Just, just wing it. Done a charity show um, and sold it out. All, it was four or five sets of friends that fought each other, two girls, like best friends as well. Um, a big main event, a local derby uh, that uh, just absolutely took off. We sold the venue out, raised about 10 grand for charity. And then I thought, after the event, I thought, hang on a minute, I proper enjoyed that. I could make some money myself here. So I've done a prize fighter event uh, in the September. That was in the May, this was in the September. Sold it out again, brilliant show. And it just went on from there, really. I just started um, doing loads of um, unlicensed shows and charity shows, doing a lot for the uh, charity. A big charity that I work with is the Media May Foundation, which is uh, for neuroblastoma, kids with cancer. So I've raised a lot of money for charities and stuff like that. And then 2016, I was with him two days ago, it was Tommy Martin versus John Wayne Hibbert. Um, obviously, I was in Hibbert's team, one of my best pals. I was at every fight with him helped him with his ticket it's just always in the, like always around fight camps and stuff like that um uh, Wayne won the fight by 12th round stoppage after in the bar I met um MTK well, was MGM at the time had a little chat of them a few beers and stuff like that just just a quick uh, a couple of an hour chat I think and then just stayed in contact um and then after that ooh, had a few chats and said, look, we're looking at expanding. Would you be interested in coming and have a chat? Went and had a chat. And um, me and Adam Hart well, sort of started um, MTK London. Um, so that was in the November. And obviously we released it at the first in January. And that's when it was MTK. It got, it got renamed MTK in the January, I think. Pretty sure. Um, and then March 2017, we done our first event. Wow. It's gone on from there. It's just snowballed, really. It's just awesome, though, isn't it? Like it's, 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 it's literally it, with MTK. It's on. It's on a Wednesday. It's on a Friday. It can be on a on a Saturday. Yeah, during lockdown, we've done we've done a lot of Wednesday shows, which because it didn't really matter because there's no crowds and stuff like that. So it's been very successful to have a midweek show. Um, we've been, had some really good blinding shows. Um, so it's, it's good to mix it up a bit. But now, going forward, we'll be looking at doing Fridays and Saturdays. Fridays and Saturdays, is that the plan now? Um, TV coverage, are you ever going to try and... Are you going to try and push for, like, um, terrestrial TV? Or... Because I think it's YouTube, ESPN... Yeah, the dream, obviously, the dream is to, to have a UK broadcaster um, broadcasting our events. 
Um, but obviously, during these hard times and that, it might not happen yet. So we're just pushing on. We've got a good relationship with IFL TV. Uh, we have our shows on ESPN in America. So our shows are getting out there. Um, we've just got to keep doing what we're doing, putting on good fights, 50-50 fights all the way through. And things will happen. That's one person you have to take your hat off to, Coogan Cassie. What he's done with IFL TV, he's just... Amazing, yeah. He's got a good team as well. He's got a good team around him with, obviously, Umar, Andy and Oscar and Raza. So, they're all good. No, they they are. They're they're the ones that, like, some of the boxers owe a lot to them because back in the day when when there wasn't many people about, they were the ones that had the likes of the young up-and-coming boxers, the likes of Dave Allen and that, and, and, and look at them now. Yeah, really. Coogan was obviously started with all the interviews and that, and now um, within everybody has got an iPhone and stuff, wants to do it. So good luck to them. The more coverage boxing gets, the better. So it's no one's ever complaining about that. So the more people that do interviews and stuff like that and the, the fighters get coverage, it's brilliant. No, definitely. Since you've been doing the boxing league, what would you say has been your best ever fight you've put on? There's been loads. I've had a good couple of even like Samuel Antry versus Sierra Osgood, Billy Bird versus Matt McCarthy, um, Lee McGregor versus Cash Farouk. That was a fight. Uh, that was a fight. You know what? There's so many. I can't even think. Um, there's been some absolute blinders. Um, obviously, the best show has, has been the Mick. Obviously, I've said it many, many times as the Mick Conlon show at Falls Park. Um, that was unbelievable. So, yeah, it's, 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 we've put on so many good fights over the years. Um, it's hard to choose, it's hard to, to remember every single one. Um, to be honest, I'm going to have to sit down and go through and, and, and write a list because I always get asked this question. I can never think. I probably should have asked you before, to be honest. But um, now, what one of the fighters that because um, I work, I do a lot of work for Steffi Ball Promotions. Yeah. Um, Maxi Hughes, what what a year that that guy's had, and the news today of of the, yeah, of, the of Walsh pulling out. It's where's it? Where's that kid gonna go? Well, listen, Maxi took his chance. I spoke to Steffi and Maxi uh, last July. I think it was June, July. And said, look, would you be interested in fighting John O'Carroll? Um, he's below lightweight. Can are you interested? And Maxi wanted to do lightweight. Steffi wanted him to do lightweight. Maxi said, nope, I can do it. I'm going to make it. It's, it's my opportunity. I'm going to take it. Obviously, the fight ended up getting made at lightweight anyway. Um, but Maxi took his chance um, and won that fight. Obviously, John O is a big crowd like he's um, said it in a few interviews he that crowd missed not having a crowd at the show really affected him um but listen max he done his job and got the win and then maxi signed with mtk and then he went over to dubai and fought victor kotachigov um and beat him on points to win a wbc international title and then he's been on my case for the last couple of months anything 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 it was speak of um, him fighting a former world champion, uh, British world champion, but that never materialised uh, due no. to a few things. Um, so then, and then obviously yesterday I got a call. Um, we got a call for about Liam Walsh, still obviously not very well with the COVID and stuff. So he wasn't going to be able to fight. He might be out for a, a good few months. So obviously I spoke with Robert Smith. Um, got it okay with him, rung Maxi. Maxi, do you want to fight in four weeks for the British title? Yes, that was a conversation done. So I'm over the moon for him. Such a lovely fella. Um, he's had a blinding lockdown. And March 19th, I believe he, he becomes a new British champion. I, I interviewed Maxi in Doncaster on his last fight. Uh, when he was meant to be going to, um, he was going to fight Coach Cup. Was it? Is it Kazakhstan? It was Kazakhstan. Is it Kazakhstan? Yeah. He was meant to go to go and fight, and, and he was like, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, and he was like, I'm, I'm excited. He says, but things never always go my way. He says something will probably happen, and 
lo and behold, COVID kicked in. Then when he got the John O'Carroll fight, um, I remember telling all my pals, I was like, got to watch Max. And they was like, yeah, but John O's coming off the back of the Scott, um, of the uh, Scott fight. fight. Um, he's going to be up for this. And I was like, well, we'll see what Maxi turns up. Two, three rounds in, you could just tell. Like you, whether Carol wasn't taking the credit or whether Carol didn't expect Maxi to box like that. Um, and then he got the win and then goes to Dubai and dismantles Kuchikov in the third, second or third round. It, it probably could have been stopped and it probably should have been stopped. Yeah, no, it, it could have. It was, um, I, I thought he was going to have him out of there, but listen, still, Kota Chigov's a good fighter, a very, very good fighter, uh, and was a very good amateur. So, Maxi to put a performance on like he did is unbelievable. So, this. He's done un- unreal. This year, he's done unreal. March 19th, I believe he, he goes and beats Paul Highland Jr. And then he's got we've got a new British champion. Maxi's dream has always been to win a British title. So, even because it's only four weeks, he might have not been... He's been training, he's been ticking over and that, but he's, he's, in, he's fighting in four weeks. Um, he don't care. He will be ready. And that British title is coming back to his house. When when you get named MTK Fighter of the Year, if that's not going to be a buzz and something to keep you motivated for 2021, nothing is. And like you said, you've got the British title chance now. And yeah, he, 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 he's in the form of his life. And sometimes people go into a fight and they can't lose. Yeah. I know it's a boxing fight, but in Max's head. Yeah, 100%. Obviously, Max is high on life at the minute and high on excitement, everything, confidence. So for him, he, he's going to be in the shape of it, obviously the shape of his life. I and mean, mentally, he's going to be in mental mental health, his life. Do you know what I mean? He's going straight into that fight, not thinking about ever losing. He's he's on a, on a high. So I'm just looking forward for him to obviously realise realize a, a dream of when he obviously comes. To, for us to give, be able to give him that that fight, unbelievable. So I'm mean, looking forward to March 19th. No, definitely. And like you said, good luck to Maxi. Eh? Um, and hopefully we'll be able to get him on the camera as well. Um, last year, um, O'Hara Davis, um, he's won the... Uh, oh, what was that? The, the, the tournament? Golden uh, contract. Golden, golden contract. Is there any talk of him fighting on your shows? Yeah, there's, uh, there's there's stuff in the pipeline um, that's being discussed at the minute regarding O'Hara Davis. So obviously, I can't go into any details. I don't, re- I'm not really involved in them conversations, but I know that there, there's conversations happening and things will start happening soon. Yeah, because his career is propelled after the after the Josh Taylor um, defeat. Yeah. A lot of people was was kind of you know he's finished, but now um, now now he's definitely on the way up again. Um, oh, one hundred percent. He's obviously he's won the golden contract. He's earned a nice few quid. He's um, he's still trained nearly every day since, so he'll be ready and he'll he's looking for a big year. It's, and it's 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 it, it's the year that anything can happen. And he's another one. He's just won that contract, so he's going into every fight now with confidence. And we we both know a confident fighter is a dangerous fighter. Hundred percent, one hundred percent. Tomorrow night, um, there's a boxer from Stoke, Jamie Stewart. Uh, recently yeah. fought Florian Marco. Uh, really good performance. He's on your card tomorrow against uh, Quayle. What was the uh, thinking behind that? Is, is is that a potential? If Stewart wins that fight, will he will he be able to get signed up by MTK or? Um. To be honest, I think Elliot Wow wins, and Elliot Wow wins in very good fashion. Jamie Stewart is a great, a great fighter. Obviously, he beat Mick Hennessy Jr. Um, got a draw with Florian Marco on an AJ undercard. Um, he's hot property at the minute, and for us to get for Elliot Wow, this is a massive, massive step up. Um, but if Elliot wants to go where Elliot wants wants to go, he needs to be beating people like Jamie Stewart. Um, so it's not going to be an easy fight, but I think it's Elliot's time to shine. Um, and what if he does beat Jamie Stewart, it's a great it's a great win on his record, especially with, obviously, his last two fights being on TV. 
you've got some absolute belting fights tomorrow night. Like the, 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 the fight fans have really, really been um, have really been gifted this weekend. Uh, you've got Gavin Gwynn, you've got Tetley, we've got Sky Sport, you've got Marku, Charlton. Literally, if you're a boxing fan this weekend, and then to finish off, you've got Burkelt versus um, Vargas. Unbelievable fight like that. Unbelievable. Two Mexicans going to war. You just know for a fact that Premier Sports is just going to be... You can't even pick a winner out of that. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's like local, local rivalry, two Mexicans, pride on the line. They're just going to stand in the middle of the ring and they're just going to have a war. Yeah, definitely 100% fight of the year candidate all day long. <laughs> Um, who's your what? What what's the fight you want to um, watch closely tomorrow night? What would you say is going to be your pick of the fights tomorrow night? Do you know what? I'm not, not even big up the own show, our own show, and that. But it's amazing. I like that show. There's seven fifty fifty fights and a prospect. Obviously, we've got Mohammed Samir making his second fight against Kieran Thomas. A tough fight for Mohammed, um, but one he comes through quite comfortly. Um, then you got. Elliot Well versus Jamie Stewart, which we just spoke about. Great fight. Great. Uh, unbelievable. I think it, I, I really do believe Elliot's going to shine tomorrow night. Then you've got... You can box. Oh, 100%. Listen, we're not writing Jamie off. Listen, he's beat Michael Hennessy Jr. on Channel 5. And then he's gone and got a draw with Florian Marco, who everyone's talking about as a killer. So, listen, we know he ain't no idiot. But I think Elliot's got... A, something special about him so listen I might be proved wrong <laughs> Jamie might be the upsetter so we'll see and listen if he does beat Elliot then of course 100% we'll give him another fight we, we, we've always done that anybody like if someone gets a good win on our show we keep we keep him on give him another fight well, look what you're doing back um then obviously you've got Sierra Osgood versus Paddy Donovan um late substitute obviously a couple of people pulled out of Paddy rung Sierra up Listen, this is the only fight I've got. Are you interested? Yes, Lee, I'll fight him. He didn't even talk money again. He's he just he's happy to fight. He believes that he'll win. He's got a good training camp with Martin Bowers and Ray Ball and that in the Peacock Gym. He, he's going to be up for it. Um, Pierce O'Leary versus Irvin Magno. Irvin Magno is very, very tough. Comes forward, ready to <laughs> ready to go to war. Um, Pierce Leary, Pierce O'Leary, I think, is another special fighter we've got. He's eight or nine-time national champion um, in in Ireland and that. So it's another great fight for him, a 50-50 fight at this stage. And then Mark McEwen versus Bradley Dawes. Um, Bradley Dawes, everyone, I'm, I'm talking, everyone favours Bradley Dawes. But Mark McEwen, he's right up for it. He, he believes he wins and wins easy. So I'm excited about that fight. Um, and then you've got Danny Carr versus Dean Dodge. Um, Danny's the Southern Area champion. D Dean's his mandatory challenger. English title eliminator, final eliminator. All on the line. Two boys go to absolute war. And it's, that's a 50-50 a fight. Dean Dodge is very, very vocal about stopping Danny. But Danny is a tough, tough boy. And he'll be bringing all the smoke. So we'll look forward to that. Samuel Antwi versus Darren Tetley. <laughs> Another great fight. I can't pick a winner. He just keeps coming. And then, am, am, I, am I on six? Obviously, Sean McComb versus Gavin Gwynn for the Commonwealth title. All the head, headline act. Um, another great fight. Sean's first time down at lightweight. Gavin Gwynn's confident. Listen, it's a great card, absolute blinding card. And to put them so, all on, like, like you said, and to put all them on one night, it's just yeah, it, it's literally it, it's yeah, 50, 50, 50 fights on a show is unheard of. So I think we're doing right? things right, and I think the fans are taking note and will tune in and watch the IFL stream. Would you have had the 50 50 fights if there was crowds? I've I've always liked 50-50 fights and we've always on our shows always tried to do 50-50 fights. Since no crowds, people are taking these opportunities more because if they don't, there might not be a fight. So sorry. so yeah, no, it's 100 percent without crowds. But when we go back into crowds, this is the motto, this is how we want to keep it. This is how the show should be. And these are the fights that should be happening. Definitely.
the COVID nineteen stops. Uh, well, it don't just stop, but just 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 look at this now. COVID nineteen comes to a halt, and they're like, right, Lee, um, we're actually giving you permission to host a boxing fight at a venue. What venue is he, and what would you want the headline title fight to be? The O2 Arena. Is that the aim? It's been it's just another one of my goals, obviously, dreams that I've wanted to do. Um, the fight, Jesus, Billy Joe versus Canelo. Can dream, can't we? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, why not? Look what you're doing. You, you mentioned earlier um, Lee McGregor versus Cash Farouk. Um, yeah. Do you think that fight could ever happen again? 100% that fight will happen. 100%. Lee McGregor's got a very, very tough fight March 19th against Kareem Garifi, another MTK boy. Um, both very, very good fighters. It's a, an absolute 50 50. Kareem's got the experience, Lee's got the youth. If Lee can win, in, and then he's got the British Commonwealth and European titles under 10 fights, which is a fantastic achievement. But obviously, Kareem's going to obviously doesn't think that's going to happen. So um, both with us, so we're, we're keeping neutral everywhere we go. We don't predict fights between two MTK fighters, but it's a great fight. Um, if Lee does win, then obviously he's going to, the fight to make would be, and the money fight would be the cash for group fight. Uh, who knows if Josh Taylor comes back um, once he goes over and beats Ramirez, which he does in May, he's going to obviously, he, he's mandatory then will be Jack Catterall. So if that fight happens over here, Lee versus Farouk could be on the undercard possibly. Who knows? Um, but that fight will happen again, 100%. Has to, it? That was, that's a fight that has to have a crowd as well, in my opinion, because... Oh, 100%. It needs to have a crowd. If you was in the crowd last time, it was absolute mayhem. I listened to it on the radio. Yeah. I'm real. I'm real like, atmosphere. So, Lee's got a massive, massive support, and so has Cash. Well, I, I think um, I, I think Cash Farouk's last performance, uh, his debut one for Sky Sports, was unbelievable. Yeah, no, very... Listen, Cash Farouk's a very, very good fighter. Um, and he's a right nice kid as well. Do you know what I mean? He's not, he's just a right down to earth kid. Um, I, listen, I believe they're both destined for world titles, Lee and Cash. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I just think Cash, I don't know, just, just the way he boxed, like he just, he, he just looks sublime. And I, I just looked at him and I thought, that fight has to happen with Lee again because it was so, it was just unreal. Was the result right? Who knows? That's why you need to get it on again, don't you? Lee won in my opinion and Lee got the decision I've got his British title sitting right there <laughs> so Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury this is the question this is the name on everyone's lips yes does it happen without a crowd it, it doesn't happen in the UK it happens abroad somewhere with a crowd I think so I think so. And then the rematch in a crowd. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully in the UK, so everybody can see. Who wins? Tyson Fury. Do you think? Back in that guy. I've, I've looked I've looked at Tyson Fury, and I think he's a phenomenal boxer, but I've looked at Joshua, and I think, I think Joshua is a handful. Not saying he's going to beat Fury at all. What's, what Joshua's... Look, what Joshua has done in a short space of time and what he's achieved from Olympic gold medal um, all the way up to unified world champion is unbelievable. And to get stopped and come back from that, it shows big mental strength. Um, Anthony Joshua is a phenomenal boxer, a phenomenal fighter. Um, but I just believe Tyson Fury is the better one. And obviously he's... A, He's, my, he's our fighter, so I'm going to back our fighter. But I still believe, even if I was just a fan, I believe Tyson Fury wins. I spoke to someone the other day uh, from Sky Sports, and they actually turned around and said the reason why they think Tyson Fury wins is because he's been boxing since he was a kid, and Anthony Josh was still fairly new to the he's sport. Into it, but it just, it's, it's, hard. it's hard to say, but 
straight up, I think Tyson Fury wins. All the all the marbles ready to go. One four the the one forty pound division is just absolutely well. It's one three five, isn't he? Uh, we've got Josh at one one forty. Do you think if Josh gets through Ramirez, which I think he will, yes, do he will. You think Josh steps up. Do you, do you, the, if the fight happens with Catrell, fantastic. Do you think Josh should step up against Teofimo Lopez? Uh, it'll be Teofimo stepping up. Do you, think, do you think Team Teofimo would step up to fight Josh? Teofimo has just proved that he's one of the best fighters in the world. He's just beat the man. So he's an unbelievable talent. Um, if he fought Josh, I think Josh would be too big, too strong, and Josh wins. Do you think it would happen? Because I know that that was a fight that and Josh... Actually, anything can happen in boxing. Trust me. <laughs> MTK fighter of, the last, fighter of the year last year was Max Hughes. What's your pick for this year? Listen, it's all up to the boys. We'll, we'll give them the opportunities. It's their time, uh, chance to shine. Who's the one to watch out for? Oh, listen, there's too many. There's too many. But listen, I start reading and everyone go, oh, what about me? What about... <laughs> but listen, obviously we've got the Pierce O'Leary's, your Mark McEwen's, James McGibbons, Michael, and obviously they're the lower things. There's so many I could name. Um, and then obviously we've got big years coming up for you. Michael McKinson's, um, Danny Dignam's, Dan Aziz. Oh, you've still got Jose Burton, Ahara Davis, Jazza Dickens, Mick Conlon. The list just goes on and on. I mean, Jazza Dickens versus Kid Galahad. That's a fight as well, isn't it? Yep. Um, yeah, that, that's all. Hopefully that will be finalised over the next day or so. And then hopefully we can get a date. So you, you just literally, it's just, it's a boxing, a boxing dream for you. It's not, uh, you've got the new Eddie Earn. I won't go that far. I won't mind his money. Yeah, you've probably already got the look of the room you're in. Hey, it's a, it's a you're bit in the proper room for the bubble. Huh? I says you're in a proper room for the bubble. Hello. <laughs> I, walked, I walked in here Tuesday night. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'll have a bit of that. Um, it's, been, it's been awesome speaking to you, mate. That's time from my downstairs. Home. It's, uh, it's been awesome speaking to you, mate. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I, thank, I really thank you for giving us some of your time. Um, be awesome if we could get you on again, like in a couple of months' time. When the any time, mate. Just give me a shout. I'm always available. No, that's super. Thank you very much, pal. No worries, mate. Take care. Yeah, Thanks, mate. Thank you. Yes.